We are all, whether a country or a human being, a product of our past and of what we learn from it. A product, too, of our character and our ambitions. I'm a prime minister now. I developed from what I was to become what I am. I'm the same person doing different things. I was an artist. I still like to paint and draw. I just have less time, but in politics, too, I try to paint a canvas. I visualize how I want our country to be, to feel, how I want it to change as the world changes around us. I'm not saying all prime ministers should be artists, of course, far from it. It is good if politics is a gathering of people who come from varied backgrounds. From Reagan, who was an actor, to the Swedish prime minister, who is a welder, the variety in experience is amazing. And even when the variety in professional background is less striking, Margaret Thatcher was a chemist, Angela Merkel, a PhD in chemistry, their brush in the larger tableau is far from being similar, but both impressive. I think the skills we have in one field may help or hinder in another, though, in spite of all, the artist in me is never still. Once I met someone who got really offended because I was drawing while we were talking in my office. Regular vi visitors are used to this. I do it all the time. I doodle all over my daily agenda. My office table is somehow my atelier. But the visitor who became offended at my drawing thought I didn't care about what he was saying. He said, I came here and I have a problem, so don't draw while I'm talking to you. I apologized, put down my pen, we discussed the issue, he bowed to me and he left. The next time I met with him, I remembered the offense he had taken, so I pushed my pot of pens at the outer edge of the desk, and I did not draw. Yet, still, he was not happy. At the end he said, I feel like you are not listening, you are looking at me, but you are not here. And I said, you see, allow me to draw if you want me to concentrate, if you want me to listen to you and be myself. The first time in my life that I entered a state building in Albania was when I assumed the public office, when I became Minister of Culture. It happened in a moment in very extraordinary circumstances. Life takes many turns, and this was not one I had expected, but this is a story for another day. It was 1998, and as I settled into this new life, I imagined I buried the painter in me. But then, two years later, I stood for elections of mayor of Tirana, and I won. And I saw a city facing so many challenges in front of a so high expectation from my campaign. That is when I felt my political impulse, the desire to offer people a better future, fused with my artistic impulse. I oversaw a plan to splash brightly colored paints on drab and soulless buildings in the city main entrance roads. To me, it was political action with colors, not with words, either with legislation. When we painted the first building by splashing a red and orange on the somber gray, something unimaginable happened. There was a traffic jam, and a crowd of people gathered as if it were the location of some spectacular accident or the sudden sighting of a visiting pop star. The French EU official in charge of the funding rushed to block the painting. He scratched that he would block the financing. But why, I asked him. Because the colors you have ordered do not meet European standards, he replied. <laughs> well, I told him, the surroundings do not meet European standards too. <laughs> Even though this is not what we want, but we will choose the colors ourselves because this is exactly what we want. And if you do not let us continue with our work, I'll hold a press conference right now, right in this road, and I'll tell people that the old censors of the communist era 
have been reincarnated as EU financial officers. <laughs> he was kind of troubled and uh, asked me for a compromise. But I told him, I'm sorry, monsieur, compromise in painting in colors is always gray. And we have enough gray to last us lifetime. So it's time for change. The greens and the yellows and purples and oranges that we splashed around our formerly communist capital were not going to make people less hungry or more prosperous. But this first big act had be something telling that the space they lived in was their space. So these colors did make them feel better about the place, place where they lived and did make them see possibilities in a space where it appears to be no space. It made them see that change could come in different ways, in spite of the city budget being nothing, comma, something. When I was spending most of my time as an artist, mainly in Paris, I was anti-politics, at, at least politics of the Albanian and Balkan kind. I think most artists are. But it is through the years as mayor that I understood, and as party leader and prime minister, I became quite sure that politics, at its best, is a worthy and meaningful activity which makes the world a better place. And art does the same in different ways. I've been so happy to be in a position to bring the two together. As an artist, as a politician, or as an artist and politician, I don't just argue with EU bureaucrats. I once had an argument with a World Bank guy, too, when I told the World Bank country director many years ago that I wanted them to finance new reception hall where citizens could engage with public services as part of a campaign against corruption. They did not understand me. They were quite confused when I was telling that beautifying and dignifying a public space would be a great contribution against corruption. But people were waiting in long queues, under sun and under rain, in order to get a certificate or just a simple answer from two tiny windows or two of two metal kiosks. The reply to their request was met by a voice coming from this dark hole and on the other hand a mysterious hand coming out to take their papers while searching through the documents for the bribe. The system was working for the corruption, not for the people, who if they wanted to skip the queue, they have they had to pay a bribe. We could change the invisible clerks within the kiosks every week, but we could not change this corrupt practice. Thankfully, I finally persuaded the World Bank to fund this idea. So we remove, removed the kiosks, we built the bright new public space of reception hall that made people, Tirana citizens, think they had traveled abroad when they entered to make their requests. We created an online system of control and so speeded up all processes. We put the citizens first and not the clerks. And we proved something which was very helpful. It's not about genes. It's not about some being with a high conscience and some others having not conscience at all. For example, we cannot imagine an Albanian emigrant in Germany driving without a seatbelt. But I've seen German embassy people in Albania doing so. It's not about genes, it's about environment and respect. And it's about system and partnership. So now, as Prime Minister, I'm once again trying to improve the environment in which people go about their daily lives. We are once again bringing down illegally constructed buildings. We are once again trying to put art and culture at the heart of our economic and social renaissance and to make culture part of our governance. And our ongoing project is to transform the Council of Ministers building in a mixed use. First floor for culture, second floor for governance. And this I know, that just as politics can be a force for bad, so it can be a force for good. And it's very best it can be transforming for the world. As art can, because art compasses and rests for change whilst it is about understanding, as Kafka once said. Artists must strive to interpret the world, being the changers of perspectives within it. So must politicians. Artists are providers of hope. So must be politicians. How often, down through the years, have we heard political leaders talking about the need to focus on the big picture? What is the big picture? It, it is the vision 
we have for the world. What does the vision constitute? It is made of the built bold strokes that combine to deliver the change we need for the world. What does the artist have in mind as he paints a picture? He has in mind the vision of a finished work. So today, as a leader of my country, I have a vision in my mind for a country that is more modern, a country whose people are more prosperous, a country whose public services serve the people and not those who run them, a country where public space become a common space. I know what it feels like, and through my leadership and the decisions we now make, I'm trying to turn this vision into reality. This is the big pictures. It's trying to grasp the right moment, to create space where it appears to be none, and even impossible to have one. Think about it, and you will find a lot of examples in world history. The creators of the European Union are rightly down in history as people who had a vision, but also the ability to make it become real through politics as a force for good. We can see them as the painters of a very great tableau of nations and histories and people who put their own and their country's narrow interests to the service of a very greater ideal. And another part of my big picture is of a new Balkans, a peaceful, prosperous Balkans. Now that surely would be a space such as never existed before. But think, this year we commemorate the 100th anniversary of the First World War, but also this week there is a commemoration of the end of it, a war which sparked in the Balkans to spread across continents, heralding death and suffering hard to imagine for our generation. And this year, 2014, we have the first year of peace in every border of our region as never before. And I come to you here today in the same week as I became the first Albanian Prime Minister in more than 60 years to visit Serbia, a peaceful, prosperous Balkans, a strong Albania as part of a strong European Union. These are big, bold strokes that I long to make part of our big picture. It is a vision that inspires me, inspires me to work day and night to make it happen. And these two parts of the same vision hang together. A peaceful, prosperous Balkans will be good for the European Union, just as the European Union, despite the occasional zealots over bureaucrats, is good for the Balkans. Think of the forces that have led to the scaring of Europe. Racism, nationalism, xenophobia. Together we can beat them. Together we can create the space for a multiplicity of cultures, beliefs and identities to live side by side. And here is where my life as a painter and my life as a politician diverge. When, when you do a painting or when you do a doodle, when I doodle on my agenda, there comes a point where it is done, the job is finished. But in politics, the picture is never fully completed. Trying to paint, we never has complete control of where the brush may lead. So, Still, we must hold on to the vision and persevere. And when people say, as far too often they do, that politics can never bring change, I say they are wrong. It can, and it does. But of course, we know that just as politics can deliver change, so politics can hamper change. Just as politics can bring peace between peoples, it can bring conflict. Every step on the way, we face choices, just like the artist. This color or that color, this brush or that brush, this space or that space. What is the picture we are trying to paint? And if ever any of you come to Albania and you come to see me in my office and you notice me doodling, please do not be offended, as that, ma as that man once was. It is part of who I am, the hand that moves freely, creating a space where there appears to be none. That is not a bad way to think of how we make progress. Thank you.